Hi, my name is Orle. I'm 24 years old. I am from Westeros in Sweden. I'm a member of the Patients Council and I've been obese since I was a child. My school life affected by obesity when I was started the third grade. Every single day I went there to school, I got bullied, I got so low self-esteem. It took me around I think one year to destroy all my self-esteem and then when the suicide thoughts come in mind and it destroyed my entire school because I didn't want to be there, I didn't want to attend, I did some things that people don't think is really good for you but I did it anyway. Every morning when I woke up I did something that I don't, I'm not proud of but I did it to get away. I did go into the, to the, the school bathroom and I started to eat soap so I can puke, so I can go home. Because the sickness, the, the, the fear that I made for my mom, she didn't believe I was sick because she knew I just wasn't flee the school. So I went in there, I took the soap, I ate it, but I couldn't puke inside the bathroom because no one saw me. So I went into the classroom and then I puked and then they sent me home. When I had my issue, when I was really bullying, when I had the big problem, when the suicide thoughts and everything came in, we started to look to the school nurse to like, could she help me? What can I do? And she didn't, she didn't have anything that she can do. She just said, try to lose some weight. But the suicide thoughts, it was not on her table. She couldn't do anything about that. So they sent me to the next person to a therapist and this therapist started to talk with me and said oh I can see that you you feel down you got no friends and everything but you need to lose some weight so I send you to the dietitian because she's gonna help you with that so I went there and the same thing goes there oh you have the suicide thoughts and you're adopted so I need to send you back and you need to see a psychologic I mean everything in that moment was just like we didn't have any answers, we didn't know anything. And for me, like a child, you know, I met a lot of people, I talk about how bad I feel, and it didn't help me because they couldn't find a solution for it because there weren't, weren't any solution. I mean, my mom, she looked for an understanding and she was, she was feeling, she was, wanted me to have some friends. She wanted me to like feel like a child, you know, and not sitting on meetings every time to speak about my problems. And, The support that we looked for, we didn't found it because the, all the support and the things they said is like you got to change and you got to do something with the weight, your obesity. And my mom said she was so, she was so frustrated, even getting any support or anything. So she started to look for something herself. She started to look for other parents that had the same issue, a child with obesity. And she found a lot. And they were so ashamed, these parents, because they, they always got, um, yeah, they always got so much pressure on them because it's so easy to take away the food and everybody said you should just have some, so get your son to exercise and you, your daughter just do that because it's so easy. So my mom they met with his parents and they started to talk to each other and started to support each other. and. What we did, the children, when we was there, I was really young when I were, went there. We started to play and we had set up some rules because we didn't bully each other. And after a while, we started to do it regularly and we started to get this organization up. And this organization called Hobbs, it's still active today. Hobbs, it's the name of an organization. And we're working in two different things. We work with the, the adults and the question here in Sweden, how you should treat each other because it stands for health at every size because it doesn't count as long if you're big, if you're small, as long as you focus on, on the health. I'm a lecturer. I travel around and I talk to schools. I talk to dietitians. I talk to uh, doctors about this matter, to be a patient, to, to be a child and to feel down. So we're like, we try to, we give support to people that need to talk about bullying and talk about these things. We got the, the, child, uh, the child organization called iHeart and iHeart, we're going to start again 
when I was little with activities for children and they all can feel welcome and no bullying all are allowed. The stigma here in Sweden or the stigma I have experienced is often when I go to the doctor or I try to look like uh, for an issue. I mean, I have like a back pain or something. And the first thing I said when I come in, I say, I need something to help me with, with my back. And they always like, they look at me and they look and say just, oh, it's because of your obesity. It's because, of, because you're big. So you need to start to focus on that. And I say, I'm not here for that. I'm here because my back hurts and I need help. Yeah, start to lose some weight and then you can come back. And sometimes when I start to meet people all around and I start to talk, a lot of people, they get like really like, wow, you know stuff. Because you know here, the biggest stigma there is, is you're, you're fat and stupid. And it's so, so common everywhere. So when I say something or get an answer in a classroom where there's a lot of people, to stop wondering if, like, did he just say that? Stigma has affected me in, in a lot of ways, but not, not really now when I become older. When I was younger and I was bullied a lot, I could just feel everybody's, like, uh, when they looked at me, I just thought what they were saying, you know. I saw how people react when I entered, like, a food court. You know, I went in and people started to look down and, you know, they didn't want to get eye contact with me or anything. So I just thought down, you know, I can feel what they said. And like one time there was a guy who just started to stare at me and just like, what, what did you, he do, you doing here? And they started to talk to each other, I mean, all around the table and everybody was looking at me. I don't know what they said, but for me, I felt so down, so I just went out. I'm helping a lot of children today with my lecturing. I travel around schools and I'm talking to, to a lot of people about the bullying and the feeling that I thought. I, I take my example, my life story, and we have a movie that's based on reality. We show it to the parenting group, we show it to the doctors, dietitians, we show it to a lot of people, like a lot of parents, and of course school children. So they can talk about the bullying, so they can talk about the problem of being bullied and of course the stigma and uh, like what's important because a lot of children, you know, they don't focusing on what's important like what the food does for you and everything. So I'm trying to be a good model, a good role model because I went from suicide thoughts to lecturing and to helping a lot of children with this and I've been doing it for a long time now and I really enjoyed my job. My lecturing work, it has really like, helped me a lot because I meet a lot of children and when I talk to them and I, I, I can hear their stories, then I can take their stories and I can, you know, take it to the next level. I can, I can talk to the people that need to hear their story. I can be their voice, I can help them and they can help me because when I was there I had no one to talk to, I had no one to, to talk about my suicide thoughts. And, the thoughts about my own weight. So it helps me every time I talk to someone about this problem and a lecturing. A lot of children, they don't make their own decision about food and like how, what they should eat every day, you know. They, they get bad decisions because, I mean, when you're a child, you don't cook your own food. You eat in school and you eat in home. So your parents make all the decisions. So I think like when you're really small, you, you can't do anything about learning. You should learn a good way, like have a good, good measuring, you know, like not, not being shamed for the food. I mean, when you're older, you, you get to understand like when you eat something, you get bigger, you need to exercise, you need to have a good, like a good, you need to be a friend with the food. I mean, you need to know things. And when you get even older, you start to make your own decisions. So I think it's, it's really good that you can, you can learn this stuff. You need to have a good, good way of knowing about healthy food. So you can, when you're, you're deciding and you're cooking for your own, you can make good choices. 
When I'm out lecturing, I talk a lot about the media and the media's influence on the children. Because every summer, there's always a picture on a girl in a bathing suit or a guy that had just got this body. It had took, it took her like two weeks to get this. It's so easy, just so damn easy to lose weight. And a lot of these children, they, they, don't really, they, know, they don't even know how to read. But they can see the pictures and the parents just talk about it like crazy, like, oh, it's soon, soon it's time for the beach, I need to lose weight. And there's a lot of problems with it because the children doesn't understand. And if you take like a magazine, I mean, it doesn't have to be a, 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 a regular, I mean, like just a local. They always talk about weight and everything, how you should lose it, how easy it is. Like media affects a lot on the children because they see it. And you know, you, even if you don't want to show them, you always put like the paper on the, uh, on, the, on the table and they walk by and they see a picture of someone lose a lot of weight. The lecturing and the thing I will do, I will keep on going in Sweden because Sweden we really need this. I need to go to the school and I need to help the people that need to be helped. And they, I think the problem is that they don't see this as a big problem, the obesity and the bullying. So I will be the voice, I will start to talk, I will lecturing a lot of people about this. And after that, I have no idea where it's going, a different country, that would be really great. But for now, we'll go in Sweden and help as many as we can.